I'm moving, moving forward every day. Jesus, I just let him lead the way every second, every minute, every hour of the day. I'm moving with Jesus every day. For a world in crisis. Yes, we are currently in a COVID-19 pandemic crisis. But even before COVID-19, there were crises in our world. Political crises. Yeah, we had the humanitarian crisis in our world before COVID-19. We had the fear crisis in our world before COVID-19. It was there all the time and it worsened uh, this fear crisis and uh, the political crisis and the uh, humanitarian crisis worsened as a result of COVID-19. And so tonight, as we look at this pandemic, COVID-19, as we consider its devastation, we are told that there are over 34 million COVID-19 cases worldwide. I said over 34 million, with over 1 million dead as a result of COVID-19 complications throughout the world. In America alone, you have over 7 million positive COVID-19 cases with over 200,000 dead. COVID-19 has changed the world, I repeat, COVID-19 has changed the world, resulting in a worldwide pandemic. As I said before, this, this pandemic has impacted politics in our world. And so tonight, as we look around the world, we recognize the world is in a political crisis. This pandemic has brought on economic challenges, fiscal challenges. And so we look at America as America is preparing in a few weeks' time for election. And we recognize that politically, America is in a crisis. We look around the world and, 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 and we see in other places... Across right in the Caribbean, in Guyana, there's a different kind of political challenge and crisis there too. We look beyond the Americas and we look uh, into Africa, we look uh, into the Middle East and, and we see that indeed there are crises out there also. Political crises are all around in the world this evening, we think about what's happening with Azerbaijan and, 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 and Armenia, and we recognize that we see there again another crisis. And Jesus told us that indeed, as we come closer his second coming, these crises will intensify and they will become widespread. I repeat this evening, Jesus told us these will become commonplace. How do you know that, preacher? Well, Jesus spoke it in the Word, and so I want you to go with me this evening to the Word, Matthew chapter 24. In verse 3 we begin, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Verse 6 reads thusly, And ye shall hear of wars 
and rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. Jesus said that there will be wars and rumors of wars. He said that there would be earthquakes. He said that there would be famines. Jesus said that there would be pestilences. And when these things come upon the world, they will impact societies, they will impact nations, and our political leaders would find themselves stuck, not knowing where to turn and what to do. And we are there this evening as we look at what's happening throughout our world politically. The truth is that our, our politicians do not have the answers. They, they search for answers. Many of them pretend to have the answers, but the truth is they do not have the answers for the crises which they are facing, which their nations are facing. Jesus said, this is what will happen to the world, and things will not get better, but things will get worse. Jesus said that there would be a fear crisis. Just before his return, the world will be gripped by a fear crisis. And indeed, we are here this evening. Ever since 9-11, the world has changed and uh, citizens throughout the world have become afraid. Many have ceased from traveling since 9-11. Well, COVID-19 has come and uh, now you add COVID-19 onto 9-11 and fear has intensified and fear now grips the world. People are afraid to travel. In some places, uh, there is self-imposed curfew. People are afraid to come out of their houses. People are locked away in their houses as though they are behind prison bars. Uh, things have gotten so bad as a result of COVID-19. It would seem as though people are even afraid to breathe. Luke 21, 26, Jesus talking about signs of the end. He said in verse 26, Men's hearts fail in them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. So Jesus, as he spoke of signs of the end, he said to his disciples, uh, one of the signs you would see is that there would be a fear crisis. For men's hearts will fail them for fear as they look at what is happening around the world. As they see the things coming on the earth, their hearts will fail them for fear. Jesus saw COVID-19. He didn't name it, but Jesus saw it. And Jesus said that men would become afraid. That's where we are this evening, living in a world of fear. I said we are living in a world of fear. Men seem to be afraid even of their own shadows this evening. What a world we are in. What a world we are in. In a, in a political crisis. In a state of fear, a crisis of fear. What a world we are in this evening in a state of humanitarian crisis. I said a state of humanitarian crisis. The crises are many. I can spend all evening here listing them. I don't have time, and so I'm just listing these few. Humanitarian crisis. Millions are displaced tonight all over the world. Millions are running tonight from trouble at home. 
running from civil unrest at home and looking for a place of safety, a place of security, a place where they just survive. And we could call them refugees. Millions tonight are looking for refugee status. They are leaving the African continent, leaving places like Syria and coming over into Europe. And they are presenting a tremendous challenge for those places in Europe like Sweden and Greece and those other places in Europe. A tremendous challenge, a tremendous humanitarian challenge. Right around this year, we have thousands who are leaving the country of Venezuela and they are coming over into the Caribbean, into Trinidad and Tobago and Guyana and, and Suriname and other Caribbean islands. They are looking for refuge because there is political unrest in their country. The very basics of life they cannot get. And so they are coming across, some legally, others illegally, but to them it does not really matter because they need help. That's where we are tonight in our world, a humanitarian crisis where all over the world millions are seeking refuge as they, as they flee all kinds of troubles. At home, Jesus said that these will exist. So we go back and we pull it out from Matthew chapter 24. Yes, we get back there and we read again verse 7 of Matthew 24, where it says, Nations for nation shall rise against nation, internal fighting, civil unrest has resulted in millions having to flee for their lives. External fighting, one nation against the other, has also resulted in millions having to flee for their lives. Nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And Jesus said there shall also be farming. In many parts of our world, sub-Saharan Africa and other parts of our world, famine. People have no food to eat. There is drought. The earth is not yielding anything. There is no rain. And the people are starving to death. Children are starving to death. Jesus says these things will intensify as we get closer. His second coming. There will be famines. And then he said that there will be pestilences. I said before Jesus saw COVID-19. Pestilences. All kinds of diseases. All kinds of viruses. Jesus said they will intensify. And so we have seen others before. Others before we have had H1N1. And all the others which came before. And now we have COVID-19. Jesus said that they will come and they will come more and more as we get closer to the end. He saw COVID-19 and he saw the fallout that will, be will result uh, because of COVID-19. Jesus saw everything that will happen. All that's taken place tonight, Jesus saw it. And he told us that these things will take happen. These things rather will take place. These things will happen. Jesus saw it. What is the meaning one would ask of these crises? What do they really mean? What do they really mean is a question that one would ask. As we examine the word of God, we recognize that they are telling us that Jesus is soon to come. 
because Jesus gave them as signs of his soon return. And so they are telling us this evening, time is running out. That's what they are all about. They are telling us time is running out. Jesus is soon to come. You see, Jesus wants us to understand that as we look at all these crises taking place, he wants us to understand man does not have the answer. Uh, the condition of the world and the hope of the world is not in the hands of man. The hope of, of the world is not in the hands of scientists. And the science, as great as science and scientists might be, the hope of the world is not in the hands of science and scientists. Indeed, eventually, there will be a vaccine for COVID-19. Uh, but the hope of the world is not in a vaccine for COVID-19 because when COVID-19 goes, and only heaven knows when it will go, something else will come. And so tonight, this preacher is saying, the hope of the world really is in Jesus. I repeat, the hope of the world really is in Jesus. And this is why Jesus said to his disciples, I know the condition the world will get to, uh, but I will not allow the world to self-destruct. I will return. I will come again that I might gather my people. I will come again that I might pull together and save my people. Those who love me, those who believe in me, those who trust me, those who who have decided to follow me, those who have given up mother and father and brother and sister and houses and lands and jobs for me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice, I will come again that I will take them to myself. John 14, 1, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Verse 2 tells us, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Verse 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there he may be also. Jesus Christ uh, is saying to us, as he said to his disciples back then, I am going, I'm going to prepare a place. I'm not going to be idle, but I'm going to prepare a place. I'm going to prepare a special place for you. And if I go, I will come again. I'm coming so that I can take you with me. I'm going to my Father. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to return that I might take you with me to heaven. That I might take you into the presence of my Father. The good news this evening, the hope for the world in Christ this evening, is that Jesus Christ is coming again. The good news uh, is that Jesus Christ is coming for his people this evening. He has gone to prepare a special place, a special home for his people. I thank God this evening that Jesus Christ has gone to prepare a special place for me. 